was in school Gotta stay cool, cause rules is a rule Alright, hello there, thrill seekers Let's start a cult New t-shirt today That was a little snippet of the song Rules is a Rule by Dementia 13. That came from the second Dementia 13 album. That's actually a re-recording that I started in 2018 and finished uh, yesterday. I guess, yeah, yeah, yesterday. Anyway, (laughs) took me a while. So, uh, somebody asked me in an email to talk about the joy of Zen and I thought yeah that's good because I don't talk about that enough you know I kind of made a thing Ziggy's kind of moving around what are you doing Ziggy anyway uh, I kind of made a thing early in my career as a writer about Zen to to, to, to say things like Zen is boring or Zazen is boring and maybe that came off a little bit negative. And I think the reason I did that is I was sort of fed up with seeing a lot of people talk about meditation in really these kind of terms that, that sounded like they were trying to, to sell it, like do a kind of a hard sell on meditation and telling you, all the great benefits and all the great wonders that it would produce and how you know you were going to have these great experiences and it was going to be wonderful and everything was going to be beautiful and it was going to be you know trippy and, and great and wonderful and you know whatever you know they, they, there's plenty of stuff out there and you're you're on the internet right now you're on YouTube I assume so you can you can go to I'm sure a dozen places right at the tip of your fingers there and find a lot of this stuff online where people are talking in great superlatives about meditation and trying to sell you on it usually because they've got a product to sell they've got a book to sell like I often have a book to sell or they got a meditation um, program to sell or, or, or something or if they're you know TM they got a six thousand uh, dollar mantra to sell you I don't think it's six thousand dollars but they got a mantra to sell you that's gonna cost some money and stuff so they want to sell you on the stuff or you know sometimes it's a more sincere uh, reason for doing that they 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 really think that meditation is a good thing uh, for the world for themselves for people and they want to be positive and cheery about it and they want to give you a you know a good impression of it early on and so that's nice so it's not always kind of sinister motives of profit and and, and things like that but I, I felt early on that the problem with that is it tends to build up big expectations. And it kind of it did that for me, you know, and I, and I got into meditation at a period when you weren't really hearing a lot about meditation. Like in the early 80s, when I first started getting into meditation, meditation was kind of on a down swing. You know, it had been on an upswing in the 60s and 70s, uh, but by the early 80s, uh, not many people were getting into meditation. So, but when I went back and looked at that older literature from the 60s and 70s, it was all very, you know, woo, you know, you're going to have a great experience and wonderful things are going to happen. So when I first started meditating, I expected a lot. And frankly, it didn't deliver anything like my expectations, at least not early on, at least not the early the early experiences of, of meditation practice did not live up to the hype that I'd heard in these kind of older books and magazines and whatnot that I'd seen about meditation. You know, I expected bells and whistles and enlightenment experiences and four-armed Vishnus uh, floating through the air and and wonderful experiences. And luckily, I had a, a, a good teacher who, you know, kind of saw me through that period and helped me get through the, the period of, of just kind of boredom, you know, which is why I started saying Zen is boring, because really when you first start with Zazen, I think most people's experiences, especially if they've come into it with a lot of hype and stuff, the, the, the initial experience is going to be like, I expected great things and I'm just sitting here, I'm doing a meditation posture if you can't tell, I'm just sitting here on this cushion just bored out of my skull, like I'm just looking at this stupid wall and I... 
waiting for the bell to ring and nothing's happening. It's just boring, you know, and that's, and, and I actually think there's something you can learn from boredom. And, and that's the other reason I, I talked about it a lot, because I, I think if you can learn to be bored, that's a, actually a great skill. Uh, I think there's, maybe I should do a whole video about that, but that's not what this video is. This video, I'm going to try to do the other thing and tell you about the joys of Zazen. So I got some quotes here, and uh, one of the best ones is from Fukan Zazengi, which is one of Dogen's most famous pieces, Dogen being the 800 years ago dude who started the form of Zazen, the form of Zen practice that I follow, the Shikantaza Zen. Well, he didn't start it, but he brought it to Japan and made it. He was the, the most uh, famous early popularizer of it, and he's often cited as the founder, even though he's not really. Anyway, Fukan Zazengi is one of his earliest pieces and often the title is translated to something like recommending zazen to all people although it's it's a really hard title to to translate but that's close enough for our purposes so in his his little essay called recommending zazen to all people he says this sitting in zazen is not learning zen concentration so that was kind of a, an image people had learning zen concentration which would be like this trying to learn a, a practice of intense concentration so he said it's not learning zen concentration it is simply the peaceful and joyful gate of the dharma so he talked about the joy of it and here's another quote from another famous early piece by Dogen, Bendoa, which I put in my book, Don't Be a Jerk, as Dogen's uh, FAQ. And Fukan Zazengi is also in Don't Be a Jerk. I think it's in, yeah, it must be in Don't Be a Jerk. My versions of them. So this is, I'm reading from the Nishijima Cross translation, uh, my teacher, Gudo Wafu Nishijima, and his student, Mike Cross. Here's the, here's the uh, quote. If a human being even for a single moment, manifests the Buddha's posture in the three forms of conduct, uh, which is, uh, uh, what is the three forms of conduct? Yeah, waking, sleeping, and what are the three forms of conduct? I will look them up and I'll put them on the screen because I can't remember what the three forms of conduct are. Anyway, if a human being, even for a single moment, manifests the Buddha's posture in the three, three forms of conduct, and the Buddha's posture means zazen, means sitting in meditation. Uh, while that person sits straight up in samadhi. Now, Dogen, often samadhi is used as meaning a special state of intense concentration or enlightenment or a kind of a, you know, used to indicate this kind of special mental state. Dogen used it to mean just sitting zazen, no matter how you feel about it. So when that person sits up straight in samadhi, the entire world of Dharma assumes the Buddha's posture and the whole of space becomes the state of realization. So Dogen says something big happens when you do Zazen. So when you, sitting out there in your underwear, watching this video or whatever you're doing on the toilet or however you're watching it, when you do Zazen, the whole, how does he say, the whole uh, Dharma the whole world of Dharma, which is basically everything. Dharma, in this case, kind of means everything. The whole world of Dharma assumes the Buddha's posture. So the entire universe assumes the Buddha's posture. That's what he's saying, and that's what he means. He's not hes not trying to be poetic here. He, he means that. So that's interesting. And maybe we should make a video about that, but that's let's keep going. The practice thus increases the Dharma joy. There's that word, joy. The Dharma joy that is the original state of the Buddha Tathagatas, the, the Buddhas, and renews the splendor of their realization of the truth. Furthermore, throughout the Dharma worlds in ten directions, ordinary beings of the three states and the six states, those are, those are all the kind of states you can be in, uh, heavens, hells, various states of mind, and various states of body that, that we can be in the three states and six states. There's a, Anyway, it's all Buddhist stuff. Uh, all become clear and pure in body and mind at once. They experience the state of great liberation and their original features appear. So he's saying that just by your doing zazen, even if it feels boring and even if it feels like nothing, you, you right out there, you I'm talking to, 
are doing something for the entire universe. Now that sounds crazy, but he means it. He, he's not, as I said before, not trying to be poetic. Well, he's probably trying to be poetic too, but he's not trying to use a metaphor. He's, he's actually, he actually means that because Buddhist philosophy has it that our inner, our inner self, our personal inner self, and the outer world, you know, the whole world that, that we see as out there, projected outwards, are actually the same thing. So if I do Zazen, I am actually making the whole world do Zazen. That sounds crazy, but that's what Dogen means. And all I can say is that if you get into this practice deeply enough, weird statements like that start to make sense. You start to go, oh, I see how that's working. And it's not always in a really obvious way, you know, you're not, don't expect it's going to be like, I remember reading Ram Dass's book, uh, Be Here Now, and he's writing in the 70s, and he's talking about how he's imagining this state of uh, meditation is uh, going to make Nixon uh, make friends with Brezhnev. Was Brezhnev the the premier of Russia at the time, anyway, whoever was the premier of the USSR at the time, you know, and make peace in the world, and he was going to do all, all these things with his meditation, and then how disappointed he was when that didn't actually happen. So don't expect stuff like that. But as you get into this practice, you start to see that in subtle ways, in subtle and, and, and very powerful ways, this actually is happening. So your zazen, the, the zazen that you do just by yourself in your room or wherever you're doing it, is actually affecting the world. I remember somebody asked Nishijima Roshi about this once, and he said, the person said, do, does it really affect the world? And he said, oh yes it does, but in a very subtle way. <laughs> you know, that was his, his way of answering it. So don't expect, you know, to go boom you know it's going to be something you're going to see very obviously but in a subtle way it, it, it affects everything but we're talking about joy sorry I went on a tangent there I would say for, for myself that I practice whether I feel like it or not so every morning I do zazen I, I very rarely skip it and in, in the past almost 40 years since I first learned how to do it I have almost never missed a day. I, you know, early on in my practice, I probably missed more days than I do now. But, but in recent years, recent years meaning the past 30 years or so, I've hardly ever missed a day of Zazen. You know, occasionally if I'm, if I'm traveling and too jet lagged to do it or, or something comes up, I'll, I'll miss it. But, but almost every day I do it, which means that I am doing Zazen on days when I just feel like crap when I just feel like this is the last thing I want to do but every time I do it I feel better it, it may not be ecstatically better you know it, it's it's hardly ever ecstatically better to be honest but it's always better it always improves my day every time it never makes things worse it's I've never done a meditation where I felt like oh boy that made things worse it never made made things worse it never even made things neutral it always made things a little better and sometimes a lot better and there's a kind of a joy in it it's the joy of silence which is a kind of subtle joy it's not the kind of joy one gets from I don't know riding a roller coaster or or, or seeing a kiss in concert ah uh, you know or, or some you know some kind of great thing that you might think of you might associate with with joy you know some kind of event or something it's not that kind of joy it's not that kind of joy that jumps up out of your guts and stuff like that but it's a kind of it's the kind of joy of of silence it, it's it's the kind of joy of of just entering into silence and just being here with yourself in the quiet and that's a kind of joy and even though it's not a kind of like in your face sort of joy it is a real kind of joy and it's an important kind of joy and it's a kind of joy that I enjoy 
every single day and that's probably the main reason I still keep on doing it so enjoy Zazen that's my message for you today so there you go anyway if you want to help keep me help keep me enjoying Zazen you can go to the URL that you're seeing on your screen below which is hardcorezen.info slash donate that is hardcorezen dot info slash donate there you will find links to my paypal and patreon accounts those are my main and usually onlyest ways of making a living and i appreciate your support but as always this is offered for free to you from me and well that was a nice rhyme and you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me okay we will see you next time have a good time all the time bye hey Sigi, are you enjoying sleeping in your sunbeam you look like you're enjoying it. All right, I won't disturb your joy anymore. I'm going to go edit my video. See you later. Don't ask me, baby, why I got to be cruel. It's just one of those things that I got to do And don't ask me, baby, what's on my mind You know I don't mean to be so unkind Just stay cool, baby, cause rules is a rule don't look around, baby, cause you're just gonna say Why does everything have to be this way? But some of these happenings, well, they just got to be It's not up to you, and it's not Stay cool, baby, cause rules is a rule Rules is a rule You're in demand like contraband And somebody says to you, ain't life grand But I think I must have known it all along Somewhere, somewhere, you got it wrong How can I live my life under regulation? Cool. Gotta stay cool, cause rules is a rule